Rick Scott, a conservative senator from Florida, was on Fox News where he was grilled by Chris Wallace over his decision to support policies that have not been fiscally responsible. Now, this conversation had to do with Rick Scott's refusal to vote in favor of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Even though the bipartisan infrastructure bill is in fact a massive corporate handout. But nonetheless, Wallace wanted to know why is it that Rick Scott is not in favor of voting for this? Let's watch. You also voted against money in the infrastructure bill to help your home state of Florida deal with extreme weather, which you have plenty of in Florida. Why did you oppose the infrastructure bill when 19 Republican senators supported it? Chris, I believe in spending money on real infrastructure, roads, bridges, but that's what this bill has in it, sir. I spent I spent eighty five billion dollars in my eight years as governor. All right? Let's look at the bill that they that passed the Senate. It's in one. It's not paid for. I paid for my my infrastructure. I actually paid down debt. I balanced the budget. This bill, they said it was going to be paid for. It wasn't paid for. This bill said it was infrastructure. Less than half of that bill was roads, bridges, airports, and seaports. You put a bill in front of me that's going to be roads, bridges, airports, and seaports paid for. I'm very interested in doing something like that. But I am not going to bankrupt this country. This country has almost thirty trillion dollars worth of debt. That bill by itself was a quarter of a trillion dollars of debt. This has got to end. So the second video that we're gonna get to is the good one, okay? And I think it really showcases what Chris Wallace, even though he is a conservative, is good at. He asks the right questions. But before we get to that, I do have an important question for you, Jake, because I wanna make sure I'm correct in noting that Rick Scott is so fiscally responsible uh, that he engaged in Medicare fraud, right? Yeah, it was actually the largest Medicare fraud in American history. That's right, yeah. Mm, interesting. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, bankrupting the country seems to be um, really something that he's an expert at. That his company that he was CEO of was held criminally liable for uh, robbing the American taxpayers. As CEO, he said, oh, I had no idea that we did the largest robbery of American taxpayers in history. Really, then you're the most incompetent CEO that has ever existed. And this uh, loathsome guy won three major elections against Democrats, because Democrats are losers. Chris Wallace challenges Rick Scott better than any Democrat did, and he's on Fox News. But I I can't help but say one quick thing about a lie he just told you. He said this would add two trillion dollars to the debt, that's not true. It's all paid for, and it was paid for by raising corporate taxes, among other things. And Rick Scott is the one that said, no, don't pay for it, don't pay for it. That no, I don't want you raising taxes on corporations, those are my donors. So he's a gut, he's a total and utter liar, and of course the Trump tax cuts that he voted for or that he supports now, not paid for at all. Of course, actually not. added to the debt. They're unbelievable liars. I give tons of credit to Chris Wallace for being a rare journalist on television, and he's on Fox News. Well, what's your excuse if you're on CNN or CNN or MSNBC? Well, in fact, Jenk, in his follow-up questioning, he did reference the Trump era tax cuts, which Rick Scott did support. So let's watch. You talk about living within your means. You talk about the debt. You talk about deficits. The Trump. Tax cuts, which were passed in 2017, the year before you were elected to the Senate, is estimated by the Congressional Budget Office that it is going to increase the deficit by over $2 trillion over 11 years. So should the Trump tax cuts be repealed? My experience is I cut taxes and fees 100 times over $10 billion, and I actually balanced a budget and paid off a third of the state debt. You can do both. When Donald Trump was president, you had this tax cut, which added $2 trillion to the deficit, according to the CBO, and you didn't have the commensurate spending cuts. So the question is, if you're not going to have the spending cuts, should you repeal the tax cuts if, if, if the debt and deficit are so vital? Well, I'm, I'm first off, I am not raising anybody's taxes. I want lower taxes. So Chris Wallace keeps asking, all right, well, I mean, you say you're in favor of being fiscally responsible. So, and you're worried about the debt and the deficit and all that. So 
do you want to repeal the Trump era tax cuts? And he just kept saying, I'm in favor of tax cuts. That's it, I'm in favor of tax cuts, period. So that whole fiscal responsibility line, whether you're talking to a Republican or corporate Democrat, it is a lie, it is a lie. They are not fiscally responsible. They don't care about fiscal responsibility because whenever it comes to increasing taxes on their donors or let's keep it real, a lot of them are wealthy on themselves, they're unwilling to do it. They're just unwilling to do it. So the points that Chris Wallace is making is actually really elementary. Everyone in politics knows that the Trump tax cuts were not paid for and did put $2 trillion onto the deficit, right? Uh, and everyone knows that this Build Back Better bill attempted to pay for the two trillion. Uh, and so, the, but the reason why Chris Wallace looks like a hero for saying the obvious is because he's the exception that proves the rule. The rest of the media never tells you the truth. They all know it, but they just never share it with you. They just let politicians come on their shows, lie through their teeth. If he was on Meet the Press on NBC, Rick Scott would have gotten away with every one of those lies. There's no way Chuck Todd would have challenged them. So the rest of the media goes along with corporate politicians in perpetuating lies to you guys. That whenever the money goes to you guys, the voters, are not paid for even what it is, right? When the money goes to the wealthy and to corporations, oh, you don't need to pay for it. it the deficit's irrelevant, that's irrelevant, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. No, 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 they never even talk about it. God, if again, if they're not corrupt, the people on television, with a couple of exceptions like Chris Wallace, are the worst journalists in America. You know, and I think what's interesting about Chris Wallace is how he demonstrates that regardless of what his own political views are, I mean, we very likely disagree with him on most political issues. He's a conservative. But it, he shows that even being like upfront and honest about what your personal political views are, it doesn't stop you from being a decent reporter or journalist. You just have to ask the right questions and ask follow up questions. You gotta be willing to grill people in positions of power. And he's shown us on multiple occasions that he's willing to do it. And it's important for him to do it, especially considering he's on Fox News. Does any other reporter or, or anchor on Fox News share that perspective or, or ask that line of questioning? But honestly, other than Mehdi Hassan, does any other person in any way associated with cable news ever ask questions like that? Not really, of no. Corrupt corporate politicians. The answer is no, they never do. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. So really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.